Wow, video three. Honestly, I'm a little surprised you made it this far, but we're gonna keep going. This video, we're gonna talk about variables and user input. So there's actually kind of two ways to get input. You can do it with a dynamic program asking the user for some information, or you can pass in input as an argument when you run the program. So you could say, my program, and then put a couple of extra things at the end. So we're gonna talk about both of those in this video and some interesting things you need to know about Bash if you come from other programming languages because it's a little bit different. If you're not careful, you're gonna mess something up, so be sure to pay attention. So we can echo any statement, but we can also echo variables. So for example, if I did dollar sign age, this would refer to a variable called age, and you can assign a value to it above like so, passing in 30 to the variable age. This is called assignment, and this is known as the assignment operator, the equal sign. So running this, we get the value 30 in the terminal. Basically, it just echoed that value back out. So you use the dollar sign when you refer to the variable, but you don't use the dollar sign when you create the variable. There's various rules on what the variable name can be, which by the way, in computer science, this is known as an identifier, a variable name. So you can start it with an underscore, that'll work, but you can't start it with a hyphen, that does not work. You also cannot start with a number. For age, for example, does not work. You can put numbers in the middle or at the end, that is allowed, you see? And the variable names are case sensitive, so age with a capital A is different than age with a lowercase a. You can see we're no longer getting that output. So we need to make sure we match them. And there we go, it's back. Which actually brings up an interesting point. If a variable doesn't exist, it's just not going to display that value. No error is thrown. And in general, Bash is pretty lax about it. The takeaway from that is if you're running a program and you're not getting any output or simple things are missing, then you probably mistyped a variable or, I don't know, screwed up somehow. Go check your variable names, make sure everything is good. Now, when it comes to conventions, I like to use lowercase, like so. And you can use all uppercase if it's something special, but I generally would avoid that when you can. And that's because there's actually a bunch of bash variables that already exist. And this is from gnu.org. You can see this massive list. So if you use uppercase, there's a chance you could overwrite one of these and you might need one of these values later on. So I'd just be really careful about it. So for my variables, I go lowercase. And the important thing to know about that is if you assign a value to a variable that already exists, such as bash here, it's just going to overwrite it. So take a look at this. If we echo bash in all caps, we get forward slash bin forward slash bash. If we then assigned a value to bash, such as pizza, and then we echoed bash again, we run this, and you can see the second time around, it has the value pizza. No errors are thrown and this previous value is lost. So just be very careful when you're working with these variables in all uppercase. And also note, there's no quotes on this variable here. Everything is treated as a string in bash. You can still do numeric operations so you can add and subtract and do all that stuff. And we'll probably talk about how to do that in the next video. But with that, there's also no type to the variable. The variables are not statically typed. This is a lot different than if you were to come from say C++, C Sharp, Java. These languages, you say what the variable type is up front and it always has to remain that type. That is certainly not the case in Bash. And the value one, for example, let's just say we had the age is one. This value here can be interpreted as a string or an integer depending on the context. So it's a little bit different than what you might be used to from other programming languages. All right, so what do we do to get a value from the user? We use the command read and then the variable we want to read. And then we can echo that back out like so. And this can be used within a larger string so we could say age is your age. And when we run this, we can type in any value, 67, and it says 67 is your age. So that's how you work with getting variables from user input. The other option is to use command line arguments. So in that situation, when we execute our script by saying dot slash intro, which is the name of our file, we can pass in additional information here, such as 68. Well, the way we would grab that value is with dollar sign one. So the dollar one is going to grab the first argument passed in. You can have multiple separated by spaces. And there's 
actually a dollar sign zero, which is going to be the file, and I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm gonna clear this up. All we're gonna do is just echo dollar sign one. And to run this, we would say dot slash intro, and then pass in some value such as 68, and it's gonna echo that value back to us. If we said dollar sign two, well, as it stands right now, it's not gonna be anything because nothing's passed in as a second argument, so you get nothing. However, if we passed in another value, like, I don't know, 69, well then we get the value 69 back. We can get the total number of arguments passed in with dollar sign pound, and then when we run it, even if we pass in extra data, even though we're not using it, we get the value two, which there is zero as well. So don't forget about that. And what that is, is the name of the file, how we're executing that. Now there's one more thing I wanna squeeze into this video, and I hope this isn't too much. I know this is supposed to be pretty beginner friendly. So if all this doesn't make sense, it's okay. You don't have to worry about it until later. You can come back and watch this video. But when you are assigning a value to a variable, it's important that you don't put a space before or after the equal sign. If you come from another programming language, it might be more comfortable to you or look better to space things out. For example, you might say name is Caleb and then echo dollar sign name. When we do this, we get name command not found. However, if we got rid of those spaces, well then it works. This is the proper way to do assignment inside a bash. If we were to put a space here, it's the equivalent of saying, hey, we want to execute the name command and pass in this argument, similar to how earlier in the terminal, we passed in two arguments here. Same thing if we put a space here, well now we're passing in two arguments, an equal sign and Caleb. You can get a good summary of this in this question, spaces and variable assignments in shell scripts, and we're specifically interested in this born family. That's what bash means, born again shell. So we've gone through a few of these examples, and here are some more explanations with a good example of trying echo equals 23 with spaces. It's the equivalent of passing equals and 23 as arguments to the echo command. And when you do that, what happens is it just displays both of them. So we'll try it out and you can see we get equals Caleb in the terminal. And you have to remember that when you're executing bash scripts, it's the equivalent as if you took this line and pasted it in the terminal. So that's why something like a variable name, like name here, can be interpreted as a command because any command can exist inside of the terminal. So that's just kind of a word of warning. Hopefully that wasn't too detailed. Summary is don't use spaces in your assignment and you'll be good to go. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I think we're going to talk about how to do arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, and so forth. It's not quite as simple as you might assume. You can't just throw in plus signs and have things work. So if you want to know the details of that, check out the next video. But in order to watch that, you have to slap the like button and the subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube's not going to know that you want to see that video. So. Thank you for watching. Peace out. I'll see you in the next one.